Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay The Piazza at Schmidt's Commons is an 80,000 square foot open air plaza located just off North 2nd Street, partially on the site of the former Schmitz Brewery. Philadelphia's 6th Public Square offers a variety of seating where you can watch the game on a 400 square foot high definition Dactronics LED screen, enjoy a concert on the stage, or just come out and enjoy the sunshine. There's plenty of space to get active with friends. But don't worry, it's pet friendly too. Here, community initiatives merge with large citywide events, drawing in crowds from all over the region. Most recently, the official draft party for the Philadelphia 76ers. What are the Sixers getting from Bulls, Jay? Well, they're getting a guy who's. Wow. Sentencing for an alleged accomplice turned witness in a double murder in Philadelphia. Langdon Scott pleaded guilty to robbery, conspiracy, and burglary for the June 2009 murders of the Piazza at Schmitz. Ryan Thal and Timothy Gilmore were killed at the apartment complex in Northern Liberties. Scott was one of eight people charged in the drug-related murders. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy pop -a Mob ties. We on our way to Pennsylvania with it. Philadelphia. The Piazza at Smith's to be exact. But we're going to be in Plymouth, Maine. We're going to be in the Northern Liberties. We're going to be everywhere upscale. All my people from Philly get in the comment box. Let us know where we at because you know we usually in the middle of Philadelphia. Now, the person that we're going to be covering today is a female by the name of Ryan Thao, also known on the Philly club scene as White Girl or White Girl Ryan. Now, this story is a tragic and definitely an educational tool to anybody that ever thought of the game or definitely thinking about getting into the game. This shit is sad on so many levels, but it's definitely going to show you the dangers of the game, how the word of the streets work, and who you can probably trust. Definitely that one. Now, a little bit more about Ryan Thal. She was the youngest of two sisters in a Jewish family. She grew up in a place called Plymouth Meeting. That's allegedly on the outskirts or right outside of Philadelphia. Anybody that know about that area, y'all let us know. Now, it's supposedly an upper-class suburban neighborhood, and they're going to say she started in the club scene bartending, but noticed early on in her bartending career that a lot of the money was being made by the party promoters or the club planners. And really thinking about it, that's just the people with a long list of friends or clientele that you can bring to a certain club when you promote a party. And it really started off um, with her bartending and meeting people. They said she had a bubbly personality. Um, and it would transition right into that to where she would get into the party planning. And they're gonna say that she made a lot of money because she was tied in with the Philadelphia elite as far as the hip hop musicians, as far as the athletes and some of the top socialites in the city of Philadelphia. Now, mind you, this is going to be the early 2000s. And if you can think back or if you was here to even remember, this is going to be when popping bottles was at an all-time high. People getting sectioned. Shit, they still doing that shit today. 
But at this time, during what we call the bling era, like some people associated with music, that shit was at epic levels and epic proportions. And it's going to be here when it said that the crowd that she was dealing with would change because it would bring in the city's top drug dealers and also people from the streets because, hey, they like the party too. And you know, they was a majority of the people spending money and spending bands in the club. And when you in this line of business, when you promoting parties from Sunday to Monday, you really gotta think about who's coming in those clubs on the Wednesdays and on the Tuesdays. It's gonna be people from the streets, not every day. It's just a working 40 hour, nine to five person that's going to the club every night. So she will begin to mix with that crowd. And in that process, she will also shoot up the party promoting ladder to where she was one of the top and most recognized people promoting parties. And in turn, she would start to promote parties for other people. And in one event, I did see where she even had a birthday party that was scheduled with one of the members from the roots, like a joint birthday party. So she was really up the social ladder. I seen where she went to the premiere of the Notorious Big movie, Notorious with Freeway. Um, so she was definitely connected in the streets and it was there where she would come across a gentleman by the name of Keith Epps or Will Hooks or Keith Hooks or Will Epps or Pooh with the streets known him as and he is going to be a vital figure now exactly how she crossed paths with him that's going to be undetermined because it's mixed you get mixed information from CNBC they had documentaries kind of semi highlighting her the inquirer had some information it's definitely going to be a case of her knowing him from her party business or a side drug business as the party thing was going on because that's when that starts to shift in the game and that's another thing about how the media highlighted it they make it seem like this was a one and off deal but that is definitely not going to be the case because according to NBC Philadelphia the Inquirer and the Post Thou was kidnapped and robbed by drug dealers in 2004. That was mentioned by police sources. She was released from that kidnapping. And after her release, they said that she refused to identify her captors. Now, some would say, or according to law enforcement sources, they're going to say that elevated her from a hanger on her to one of the players. If you, that makes any sense to you. But that's five years before any of this happened at the Smiths and Piazza. And now let's talk a little bit about that because, because one thing you definitely got to keep in mind, I'm sure where she was living, and this was a $1 million development that was developed, I want to say one year before this murder even happened. So it wasn't even open that long. Even if you go to the internet and try to review this case, it's like, that part of it is almost wiped from the internet. Like they do not want that history to be associated with the PIs. I did see it was another shooting that happened somewhere along there, but they definitely in the business of promoting what's going on there now, rather than what happened in the past. So just that alone, a lot of times Jay Prince says something in the art of hustle book that was very important he said that a lot of the determination from him being where he's at now to where he started was he wanted to separate himself from where a lot of the bad shit is happening in and that's going to be the ghetto neighborhoods that's all across the united states so he said the proximity it's a lot easier for a murderer a robber to get to you if he's your next door neighbor rather than if you live 50 miles or 100 miles away from him so that kind of eliminates everything and he kind of said a big quote he said that why do they ask why do black people just destroy their own neighborhoods and 
his answer was because they can't get to yours and that's usually the case but in this case word got out on the streets that somehow she had money stashed in her house and that's the thing that's how word of the streets travel one person will hear the story and it just it elevates you might have five hundred thousand, but by the time you get to the fifth and sixth person you got five million or 5.5 million or however and that's gonna lead people to your house so apparently she maybe try to even broker a drug deal with keith x or Pooh or will hooks or the mastermind of this said scheme because in the end it was seven or eight people charged with it one being her next door neighbor a female by the name of Kitoya jones and she pretty much was responsible for gaining them access to the house in some of her testimony, I seen that she said that Will Hooks went to an apartment that was below her. And then she had to almost assist them to let them know that the apartment was on the seventh floor where Thou and another gentleman by the name of Timothy Gilmore would end up being ambushed. And that's going to be almost another tricky part of the story because authorities would go into her apartment. They will find one hundred and eleven thousand dollars and four kilograms of cocaine but it was a gentleman that was alleged to be timothy gilmore's partner uh a guy by the name last name of emerson he was seen leaving the apartment after the murders because that cracked a lot of it in some cases i'm thinking the complex was sprawling with cameras and the people didn't know nothing to really try to hide their faces they had ball caps on and they had their caps low over their eyes but he would leave with a duffel bag and stepping over the body of timothy gilmore because how the murder allegedly happened was timothy gilmore they cornered them it was one of these apartment complexes where they have entrances and exits from both sides of the hallways of where the apartments are they had one guy staged at one end of the hallway another guy staged or several guys staged in a stairwell when you get off the elevator they will be ambushed and trapped and cornered they're gonna say ryan thou would have a gun to her head timothy gilmore would have multiple guns on him it would be then where he would go to put on a struggle for one of the guns that would be when the gunfire would suddenly occur. They would say Ryan Thaw would be fatally wounded and Timothy Gilmore would be shot several times, but he would be able to make it to the elevator. Now, they didn't have what exactly happened to Ryan Thaw, just the autopsy reports, because that part was not caught on video. But Timothy Gilmore made it to the elevator and they had prime video of that and they seen he was executed. The first two gentlemen ran down, um, but the last one would go on to shoot him in the head multiple times as he left, almost sidestepping a guy bringing in some furniture, playing it so, so cool. But it wouldn't be long before Philadelphia authorities would name Keith Pooh Wilhooks as the main like the ringleader of everything or the guy that set it up and another guy by the name of Caesar Holloway who had a big role in this because they're going to say he was a person that helped transport some kind of drugs this is one of the reports that I heard because there's so many to the apartment and then he was the one that gave Pooh Will Hooks the tip now the three gunmen were going to be Darnell Merchinson, Antonio Wright and Edward Daniels um, pretty much Will Hooks would go on to label them after the botched robbery because they didn't get anything. They didn't even get into the apartment. Um, rookies, you know, they pretty much seemed like they was put on a mission to crash, if you ask me. Um, and that would bring a big uproar in the city um, and almost some controversy because they, I would see places where they would say Philadelphia media care more about white women getting killed they don't really care about the black as we know philadelphia is just outrageous kind of with the violence and this is on the outskirts but yeah i definitely need my philly my philly people to tap in and let us know where we at man um 
the Piazza at Smith's. Y'all ever hit this spot? How far is it from the city of Philadelphia where the shit go down at um, Plymouth Meet? And we want to know about that, whoever been. And y'all already know what it is, man. Y'all hit the bell under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Had to bring this story to y'all. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. It's your boy Popalot, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. Y'all get in the comment box. Shout out to the subscriber that bought me this story. We bring in the stories that y'all want to hear to y'all. Let us know where we need to go, who we need to cover, who we missed. Y'all email me, text me, CC me, direct message me, however y'all want to handle it. I'm here for all that shit. It's your boy Pop. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties.